What's up guys, Captain Ross here, East Down Aquatics, and you are currently looking at my 30 gallon planted tank up in my room. This has gone through a lot of different changes, but this is just kind of kind of be the backdrop for this video. But what I want to talk to you guys about today is Java Moss. So Java Moss is an amazing aquarium moss, or plant, or whatever you want to call it. And I would venture to say it is the easiest thing to grow in an aquarium. And there are several reasons why. Number one, it grows fast. Number two, it's very hardy and it can last through a lot of different conditions. Number three, once you have it, and it's really cheap to get, you can just break it off super easy, easily and propagate it. So it's fast, it's hardy, and easy to propagate and just stick in a new tank. So for those three reasons, I'd say it's one of the best beginner aquarium plants. And let's kind of dig into it and explain a little bit of things about it and let you guys see some little tricks with it. So my favorite thing about Java Moss, the best thing, is that you can use a little fishing line or string or anything like that, like sewing string, and stick it on stuff. So you just tie it to different things. So right here you're looking at kind of a tree setup, and we'll just zoom in here and show you. So with this, this Java Moss is now growing off of the wood because I used some sewing string to tie it on like a long time ago and I actually had more in this tank but I dosed with Excel and I think I overdosed it and it may have melted some of it back but I also had a lot of guppy grass grown in here and that definitely melted because of the Excel so quick tip if you have guppy grass do not use Flourish Excel at all it will melt it all so this is just a quick look at it. So the awesome thing is, my water is nothing special. It's about 7.5, 7.6 pH, and it grows this stuff great. It's a little browner in here, but that's because as the water goes, water level goes down, this moss up here becomes uncovered. So I'll zoom in, I'll give you a better look here. But I just did a water change on this tank. But all this moss up here becomes uncovered and starts to grow in the emerged form. So as you can see, it looks a little thinner and more matted. This is more of like a mat up here. It's really, it looks thinner because it's not like as long, but it's really thick mat. And that's because that is generally in its emerged form. Down here where it's more tangly is submerged, where it's under the water and everything. And I've actually got a clump back here hanging around too. So it's awesome because this stuff will just clump out and just spread among the tank. You can actually carpet with it. I've done that before but you run into dangerous carpeting which I will get into in a second when we talk about the problems with this plant. But an awesome thing about this plant is if you have any shrimp they love it. They'll go in there and grab the different nutrients and different things out of it and pick around and they'll live in there and it actually works really well for breeding. I've also seen it used in sumps where it's lots of java moss and shrimp and then that kind of filters out almost like a refugium freshwater. Another thing you can do as a tip is take a sponge filter and the little plastic part right at the top you can slide in some java moss just a little bit and then it'll coat and carpet the top of the sponge filter and then you have java moss growing out of the filter and it kind of hides it. So you, you can like barely tell that that filter is there besides the bubbles. That's because it has carpeted it. So that's for the good stuff. Here's the problems with it. Cladophora algae is really bad. And there's other algae that are really bad. The problem with Java moss is it can get mixed in. So in some of my tanks, Cladophora can get mixed in with the Java moss. And you can't really tell it's there until it's a huge problem. So that's a big problem because it's already tangled up. Actually, I have a little bit I can show you. I just saw some in here. So, right there. There's some algae mixed in with that. You can't even hardly tell. But trust me, that is algae right there. And I will actually need to take that little piece out. But it gets, it's so hard to tell that it can take over a tank really easy. Also, black red algae and stuff. 
But how you can tell the difference is, see how this stuff is the thicker, right? It's thicker, it looks like a plant. This stuff's like stringy. The really stringy stuff is algae. So that's the problem with this. And if you're carpeting, that cladophora can grow under your carpet layer and they come up. So I've had that problem happen. And then eventually it'll suffocate your java moss and then it's going to be mainly algae. So if you have it, remember, number one, it's fast growing. Number two, it's hardy and can last very long. Number three, easy to propagate. You want to move it somewhere else, you take, it, you take this clump, like this clump, rip it apart, like just pull it apart and then stick it somewhere else. But your disadvantage is cladophora can get growing in there really easy. So remember, if you have it, just know that you need to watch for algae because it can easily get stuck in there. So thanks so much, guys, for watching. Hopefully this quick video was helpful, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.